Sooner fans, look, take the win, okay? Please take the win. I, I know it was just about the biggest collapse you saw in Sooner history. I mean, after all, you're up 49-24 late in the third quarter and you got the ball. You're not even thinking about looking at the clock. You're not even thinking, okay, comeback is coming up by Kenny Hill and the Horn Frogs. But TCU did not give up. TCU under Gary Patterson, and, and if anything, we should have learned one thing. Remember that bowl game last year that TCU played in, the Alamo Bowl against Oregon? Oregon had an even bigger lead in that game, and TCU came back and actually won it. Maybe shades of that game was starting to um, creep into the minds of TCU optimists that, hey, another huge comeback, a second in as many seasons could happen. The Sooners, and no disrespect to TCU because they played hard in that fourth quarter. I mean, I, I can't, they what, scored 25 points in, in, in the, the uh, fourth quarter. That's right, they scored 25 points in the fourth quarter. That's scoring the Sooners in that fourth, 25 to three. And they gave themselves a shot in the end with at least a possession down by six points. For, for the Sooners, I don't really know what to make of that fourth quarter. Again, winning beats losing. You take the win, and there is a fine line between winning and losing. This could have been much worse result, and if, if the Sooners had, had blown this game, if they'd lost this game, the rest of the season could have been just an absolute bottomless pit for them, and more losses you could see easily happen, because I don't know how you pick yourself up after blowing a 25-point lead that late in the ball game with, with you know, virtually everything going your way. Running the ball well, passing the ball very efficiently and defensively controlling the game and controlling Kenny Hill who got off to that good start. So again, you take the win, all right? Having said that, the Sooners in the fourth quarter early on got away from the ground game, which I didn't understand. They were killing the Horned Frogs on the ground. I think 260 to 79 in terms of yardage. Nearly a 200-yard difference running the ball. P. Ryan and Mixon were excellent. Mixon had, I think, over 100 yards in the game, most of that coming on one run. P. Ryan was close to 100 yards, and I think P. Ryan in the game had a couple of touchdowns. In fact, he did. The running game was what was really working and setting everything else up in that fourth quarter when TCU began to make the comeback. And we'll talk about the Oklahoma defense in just a little bit, so bear with me. But Oklahoma offensively, in that fourth quarter, instead of running to set up the pass, they were either passing those dink passes, which TCU figured out, or they were having Baker Mayfield run, having him run outside the hash marks. And, and that really was not working. It really wasn't. Seems like they were kind of sitting on the ball, settling, trying to take time off the clock, perhaps. And we found out that TCU, it didn't take them but a few seconds to come up with a big play. In fact, this game, if you just wanted to summarize it in one sentence, both offenses had huge pass plays. Either that, or you can sum it up by saying both secondaries sucked big balls. You can say that too, okay? Some people probably would say the latter. I'm not going to complain about a win. Again, winning beats losing, and the Sooners needed a win big time. And if you want to play the other side, the glass half full side, you can say nice comeback by the Sooners after the first quarter, in which they were out of position defensively. They were getting absolutely burned at the corners. Yeah, you know, what's new there? Okay, opposite of Jordan Thomas. Didn't matter if it was Makai Quick, if it was, um, you know, Dakota Austin. It didn't matter if it was Parrish Cobb. Again, that side was going to be a gold rush, or in this case, a gold pass for TCU's receivers because they weren't getting covered. And offensively, the early turnover by Mayfield on the safety blitz in which he does not secure the ball. And TCU and Kenny Hill make what you pay for it with that opening touchdown. But the second and third quarters, we saw defensively the line emerge, playing much better. And again, there was no um, full selection of Oklahoma's defensive line because this time – They'd be without the other Matt. There was no Matt Diamond, but Matt Romar was back, and he made a difference. Charles Walker made a big difference today. I thought he, he played well, and I thought in the first half, Stephen Parker on special teams was impactful, and also to safety, making a big stop on third and short deep in TCU territory, forcing a punt deep in TCU territory, and then the interception in the first quarter, which led to Oklahoma's first touchdown. So I thought, I thought his play at times was, was stellar. 
And offensively, we mentioned the ground game throughout, how big it was in setting up the pass. And D.D. Westbrook finally into the end zone. He got two touchdowns, as a matter of fact. He was the big guy today as far as receiving seven catches, 158 yards, and the two scores. The flea flicker play was absolutely, you know, genius. And it no doubt caught TCU with their pants down, and that was an easy six points. So Sooners, you know, 21-7 behind, and then halftime, you know, feeling pretty good. 35-24. Nope, so that, that, that scored TCU 28-3 in that second quarter. In the third quarter, they just continued to build and increase the lead. But we know one thing about this Oklahoma squad, even though we've only seen them play four times this season. The corner position opposite of Jordan Thomas is going to be a problem that cannot be fixed. They've tried anything and everything, and it still doesn't work. Hey, how do we know this? Because the Sooners nearly blew the game, and the big pass plays were a big reason why. I mean, when that lead went from 11-3, to 3, and there was about six minutes left to go, it was, it was as a result, by the way, it was as a result uh, Micaiah Quick getting scorched. I mean, I don't even think he was within 10 yards of the guy. But when you win a game, you got to talk about the good again. Um, you know, Baker Mayfield, his decision making was better this time. Now, does he still hold the ball longer than he should? He's going to, okay? That's just the way he plays. But I thought it really paid off. And if you remember, when TCU had cut the lead down to three points, when it was. Uh, it was 49 to 46, and there was just a few minutes left to go in the game, but the TCU momentum was building. Oh, you still had the ball deep in our territory, second and 12 after having an eligible man downfield. But I remember Mayfield had to avert some pressure and then throws a tight pass that's caught at their own 40, getting the Sooners out of trouble. Of course, that's the drive that would lead to a field goal. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, what happened if Oklahoma had lost this game controversially? Which could have happened. Remember, there was a play in which A.D. Miller, with the Sooners up by three on that same drive with about two minutes to go, and it's third down, a little slant pass. A.D. Miller looks like he catches the ball, but yet maybe it touched the turf. In other words, you've given the officials reason to call it incomplete, and that's what they did. And then you might remember, um, of course, that didn't work out, and... The Sooners had to sell for a field goal. The next possession, speaking of controversy, you might remember, you know, TCU with possession. And initially, they didn't call Kenny Hill for intentional grounding. And I thought Hill, for the most part, had a terrific game. Now, there was times where um, his decision-making wasn't terrific, but when you throw for 449 and have five touchdowns, that's something. But on the final possession, TCU down six, and I think it was second down, and Hill's under pressure, but he's inside the tackles. Throws it away. Initially, the official says there's no intentional grounding. And Stoops, I, I thought Stoops um, was going to literally um, blow a gasket. I think he did throw his headset. If they had not called intentional grounding on that play, let's say that TCU on third down or fourth down overcomes it and keeps the drive going, people probably would have been, you know, upset, furious, sooner fans, of course that the game in the controversy. You can say that, but I'm telling you what, if the A.D. Miller play or if the um, the play that did not get um, held up as far as the intentional grounding, if they had not called that intentional grounding, which, of course, they reversed it later, and OU had lost the game, OU would have deserved it. They would have deserved it. Blowing a 25-point lead late in the third quarter with about 16 minutes to go, and you have the ball, no excuse for that. And you might say, well, last year TCU came from behind in the fourth quarter and scored, I think, 16 unanswered. At least I can tell you one thing. Baker Mayfield didn't play in that second half. And OU offensively was frozen. So I can at least use that reasoning. There would have been no excuse for this one. There would have been no excuse at all for blowing that big lead. But the Sooners, you know, with the, with the big sack on third down at the end by Oboe, was fourth, fourth and 20, and of course the next pass was not even close, and the Sooners were able to run out the clock. At least the Sooners found a way to close it out. 
Because, I, again, I don't know how they would have the fortitude with eight games to go to believe that any lead that they would have gotten in the future would have been able to hold up. Because, again, TCU game would have come back to mind. So the Sooners, they made it a lot harder on themselves in the end, and they realized that TCU don't quit. They play you for 60 minutes tough. Get a much-needed win, which is the Big 12 opener. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Big 12 Conference, if you didn't know it already, it's terrible. The Big 12 Conference of the five leagues out there, the Big Five, ACC, you know, SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12. Big 12 is in a league of its own as far as futility. There's no defense hardly ever played by most of the teams. I'll say by most of them, not all, but by most of them. And when you have to win games in this type of fashion, and today, 98 combined points over 1,050 total yards, 13 combined touchdowns, to me, it's like playing Madden football or the now-defunct EA college football. In other words, you're winning an arcade scoring style. And to me, that's not real football. And compared to the rest of the country, it's no wonder that the Big 12, a lot of people believe it will not win a national championship for a while, and they may not even get a team in the college football Final Four, and if that happens, the league deserves it. Even though I know West Virginia and Baylor are still undefeated, those teams still have a lot to prove. They still have a lot to prove. And what I'm telling you is that the Sooners should still be able to win this league. They should still be able to win it. I'm telling you, this league, as far as quality, there's not much in it, especially when it comes to defense. It's embarrassing to watch sometimes. But the Sooners get a win, and... It's been a while since they've won a game. So now you hope the momentum carries to the Cotton Bowl next Saturday against a Texas defense that has just as many issues. Texas will come into this game having a lot of doubts about their players and, once again, about Charlie Strong being on the hot seat. That's right. Charlie Strong on the hot seat. Tell me if you haven't heard that before. If the Sooners lose to Texas next week and even more of a downer, get outplayed and outprepared and out physical again, I, uh, I might just, you know, here's, here, I, I, I might just pull the remaining hairs off of my head. There's not very many left. Maybe it's because of football. I don't know. These kind of things happen when you get to your 40s. Congrats to the Sooners. Again, TCU, heck of a fourth quarter effort. They didn't quit. And the Sooners, in the end, found a way to win. And right now, that's all I give a damn about as far as the present. But as far as the future, um, I want to see the Sooners play with some fight against Texas and not take them lightly. It will really depend on who wants it the most. And for the last three years, you know, the Sooners have been outplayed. And in two of those last three years, They've come out on the losing end of the scoreboard. But we'll have a weekly matchup show coming up, OU Texas, on what was an unbelievable day of college football. Of course, I'll have Let's Talk College Football. Unbelievable finish between North Carolina and Florida State. And the game that we're going to be talking about for a long time, Tennessee's Hail Mary win over Georgia. But the Sooners, Baker Mayfield, played terrific. The running game was back. And defense, oof. They gave up 46, but at least they didn't give up 53. If they had, they would have lost. 52-46, Sooners get out of Fort Worth. And now we'll come back to Dallas next week and try to outplay the Longhorns. That would be nice. Catch you later.